previously on Workshop Wednesday. Since fitting off the swing arms and hubs, Daz and Jess have spent the last few weeks putting the finishing touches on the Ag Panther. The devil is in the detail. Jesse is working away at this clip for the wire cutters, which are mounted on the rear of the vehicle. I just need to move it over a little bit more, but then that just flips over like that. Jess puts in a final run of weld, and presto, looking good, but there is still a lot to make before we're ready to paint this thing. We searched high and low for many years for parts, and in all that time, we never saw a single mudguard. They're really tricky to fabricate. They're curved and have strengthening ridges pressed into them. Daz and Jess are good, but sometimes you need to phone in the experts, like Mick from Mariba, and I think you'll agree, he did a fantastic job.
Both of the mudguards are slightly different. This one has to accommodate a headlight, so Daz has to make some minor modifications. The mudguards have little hinged pieces that let the crew easily check the track and the underside of the superstructure. Daz is cutting these in now. The guy that made these has done a magnificent job. You just <laughs> don't want to ruin it. Don't want to ruin it on him. Because this is for the headlight, we need somewhere for the wires to come through down the side of the hull. So this is what this check out here is for. It's only done on the uh, left hand side. Damage when they're going driving through trees and scrubbing that. It's actually got Bosch on it, a Waffen, and a manufacturer code. That's the quality of it. That's what that mounting plate is for. It looks as though we'll need to cut more of the mudguard away for the light to fit properly. But no, this is all correct. The light has to be packed to the same thickness as the steel of the mudguard. That looks good to me. Right there. So you're going to put washers or shims under there? Uh, well, when we go to do the final fit, I may just make a, uh, like a gasket out of about a two mil gasket material, just to lift it up off it. Because as you can see, it's not having a real one to compare with it. That actually pushes down onto the mudguard to help hold it in place. But it's also going to, mean, going to mean it's on a slight, very slight angle. So. I'll end up putting a gasket underneath it 
just to, to even it up. Be a prime candidate, I think, Daz. Yes, we need a foot in the door, does it? Oh, yeah, I reckon. Beautiful, like a bought one. There she is. Daz will find some material appropriate for a conduit for the wires, and then we can call it done. Yagged panthers are even rarer than tiger tanks, so finding any parts is a real miracle, especially parts made out of thin sheet metal. We did manage to find a stowage bin, but... Why aren't we using this one as an original, Daz? <laughs> we did think to use it originally, but then we had second thoughts and thought, yeah, you know, it's just not worth the effort. But we use this to get two really good ones made. Beautiful, they've come up beautifully when you look at them. The guy that did it, true craftsmanship. A couple of bolts there, fixes them. Let me go there, Jack. Well, they even pressed the back, which, you're not, which no one will ever see. Yeah. Wow. And then these are mounted differently to our Panther, the earlier Panthers. Earlier Panthers have clips that come over the top and hook over the, the rear. These ones are actually on little saddles that drop in and are fixed with bolts at the bottom. Heavier parts are far more likely to survive the test of time. We were able to source a really good condition jack. It had like little to no work to be done on it. Uh, still works, perfect condition. You can wind it in and out, no dramas. What, um, what tank is it off? Off a, off a Yag Panther. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an original Yag Panther jack. Well, we're, we're pretty sure. It's a 20, 20 ton jack. On the Munster Yag Panther, I've seen a like belt, like a leather belt that they had an, a, attached here. So I'm assuming this went around there and they just clipped it on. I'm not sure if it's 100% what, what they've used back then, but we're just going to use a bit of wire. Um, there's a few other tanks in the Yag Panthers in the world that they've just used wire to hold it. Yeah, but just the, keep it out of the way. The, the belt, I'm assuming, would be how it would have been held. It's pretty simple. It's just flat bar that I've had to heat up and bend around and press. So you've got a, a bit of flat bar running at the back, and then you've got like a U-shaped flat bar that runs along the sides here. But I had to turn a bit of round bar to act as like a hinge in here, and then I had to turn another bit of round bar for a wing nut, and uh, then we've just chucked a bolt on this side. So this just folds... If you undo this, it just folds up and down, back and forth. So with the reflector, I just started by um, just doing a little bit of research, looking at um, models, getting some details from books. Found the angle angles of the back of this tank and worked out that you know this had to be a 90 and then this would have to be like a 30 degree angle. So I just marked it all out and pressed it and then whacked it on there, trialled it and then went back to the books and scaled it and made sure it was in the right spot and then tacked it on, put the reflector on, and yeah, so. Bob's your uncle. Yeah, that's it. We were able to source two really good condition sea hooks that I did, really didn't have to do anything to. Um, one of them had to be heated a little bit just to get it to move up and down, but it was really, really easy. A little bit of WD-40 and a little bit of heat and I just freed, freed it straight up. I don't know if you can see, but right there is where the join is. So that is original, that bit there, and then the rest of it was, uh, fabricated. Th this is actually an original mount, which is pretty cool. That's unreal. You know, considering we only had a little little piece of it, it doesn't matter, it's still, you know, still usable. Okay. <laughs> well, that's it there, pretty much. Just got to go down a little bit more. So we've got a light on the back here that we're able to source. This is an original light that's been reconditioned. We also have an, have an original mount that I was able to straighten and fix a little bit. All I've had to do was just bend a little bit of flat plate on the back. Um, later on we'll get an electrical lead and actually mount it. 
they call it an electrical penetrator. The lead runs up and through here and then into the back of the hull. Yeah, we'll have to get that, that all hooked up later on. The rear is cracking along nicely. Jess has done really well in combining the old and the new, but one detail is really setting it off. We had these nice original armoured exhaust covers. That's where the actual exhaust pipe comes out from the motor. So they've armoured it in case they get shot from behind so they don't penetrate inside the, the hull. We've, we've just had to find stuff that looks similar and convert it. These are a couple of pipe fittings, you know, from uh, 100 to 150s. And then just on the lathe, we just turn these other pieces up. There's stainless steel rings to go around here, locking rings. But they, these look like uh, they're, they're uh, a, a slotted nut. So we've just got the rings that lock them in. In the future, if it becomes a runner, we'll have to remake all this to actually work as a proper exhaust pipe. But what we've done here, just to get it on display and, and just so people can get an idea of what it looks like, we've had to replicate as close as we could to what the original flame arrestors look like. All the different components are all slotted into each other. There's a little bit around here that has a little cutout for each one of these fins. And then in the bottom plate, the same similar thing, there's little cutouts, just like an IKEA fixture. Everything's keyed in. So all I had to do is basically draw it, bend these flanges, bend the ends on the flanges, set it up so that they're all on, a, on the right angle going round, and then just tack it all in place. A lot of people are still asking why aren't we making the Ag Panther a runner at the moment? Well, if you thought it was strange we couldn't find exhaust covers, imagine the trouble we're having finding an engine, transmission and a suspension system. But the search for parts is still ongoing and if we make any major breakthroughs in terms of finding parts, we'll be sure to update you right here on the channel. So don't forget to subscribe. Now, on to fitting the gun. Uh, ready, set, action. Daz and Jess have had this piece assembled for a while now. The boys are going to do a test fit and paint it while it's on. But before we move it into the museum, the gun and mantlet will need to be removed. This will make it easier to manoeuvre it into its display area. Once we're happy with where it is, we'll refit the mantlet and gun and put on the track. And there it will stay until we make it a runner. You might be wondering why not rig it from the lifting point on the mantlet? Well the thread inside is badly corroded and we just don't trust it. It's tricky to get it in the right spot. We've had to make a support structure to hold the gun and the tolerances are quite tight. Smooth operation, Jesse. Very smooth. Very smooth operation, of course. It goes in, that's all the matters. Roof's on next. Jess will fit the roof now. And then we'll finish off the top of the back deck. And there's a few fiddly things to do. 
like the uh, holder for the barrel cleaner and that, and the wooden block on the side. We've got to mount them. Oh yeah, and, the, uh, yeah, yeah. We're on the home stretch. Home stretch. Yeah. Nice one. We just held a vote for a colour scheme, and by a huge majority, this is the one that came through. It's one that was used on the Eastern Front from early 1945, which happens to be perfect for our Yag Panther. It won't be identical, but it will be a great guide for Jesse as we prepare to get the paint on next week. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much for joining us. Don't forget to tune in next Wednesday for your weekly tank restoration fix. So until then, I'm Kurt from Oz Armour, and I'll see you on the next one.